I'm Fiona, or Fee, as most people know me, um, and I'm autistic. And this is a video that I've wanted to make for quite a long time, but I've always been nervous to. Um, I don't know why. I talk about I talk about being autistic as part of my job, um, and and I'm so passionate about it. And I think in a way I'm still processing my diagnosis. Like I think there was one thing getting my diagnosis, but there's been another thing fully understanding that. And actually I can't help but look back and see the years where my autism wasn't recognized. And yeah, it's, it's been a process. Um, but I'm gonna start talking about it because because it's important to me because I know that for me, if I'd had my autism recognised sooner, a lot would have been different. Um, not just in my treatment for my eating disorder or anything specific like that. Obviously, there would have been differences made, but I think primarily in my understanding of myself and how I understood the world, how I interpreted the world, why I struggled, why I do struggle, but also understanding my strengths. And and I get messages a lot, comments a lot about people who are autistic, who are discovering that they're autistic, who are wondering if they're autistic, who want to know what the next steps are, who want to learn more about it. And I think there's a growing understanding that autism does present differently. And of course it does. Everyone's unique. Everyone, every single person is unique. So people who are neurodivergent are going to be unique as well. And understanding the spectrum and understanding for me where I need more support and where I need less support. Um, I think it's all, it's all a learning process. It's all things that I'm starting to understand, starting to, I don't know, be able to take more sort of proactive steps in um, to helping me understand myself and therefore live, live a life that I want to live. But for this video, I'm going to talk about how having my autism recognised has helped me um, in my life, in my treatment, and I hope that this can help someone else. I know that I'm going to make this video and then I'm going to look back on it and be like, I missed so many things. And <laughs> I think that's probably one of the reasons that I've held off making it because I want to get it. Like, th there's so much, there's so much that I could talk about. But I'm going to start somewhere. I'm going to start off by talking about the main things that made us realise that um, I was autistic um, and how it's helped to have that understanding and to have and the, just the adaptations that we've made that make my world more autism friendly and have hugely helped me in my recovery, in my life and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so I can't help but kind of go back. What what were things that made us realise that autism was at play? Above anything else, um, my experience of the world is that I just didn't fit in. I used to look at other people and they used to look so comfortable and they used to just know what to talk about and how to act. And I just felt like I didn't, I didn't understand it. Um, I felt like everyone was like, had read a book about how to behave and what to say and how to talk to people and what to do with your body language and all of that kind of stuff. And I did not understand it. And I felt so just, I didn't feel like I fitted in. I didn't feel like I understood things. I didn't feel I didn't know who I was, but I didn't like who I was because I felt like I constantly got things wrong. I felt like I didn't know how to 
be social. I didn't know how to, I don't know, I didn't know how to function. I think when I think back, all I feel like is that feeling of wrongness. And no matter what I did, I couldn't make it right. Um, I used to look at other people and see how they would behave, all of this kind of stuff to try and understand what I was doing wrong and how I could do the right thing to fit in. But it never ever resolved that feeling of, I don't get this, I don't fit in. I always say I feel like a piece of origami that I was folding myself and pushing myself into try and make myself into this thing and it wasn't working. And I think if I had understood that I was autistic, I would have understood that feeling. Because being neurodivergent in a neurotypical world is difficult. It's exhausting. It doesn't make a lot of sense. There are concepts and things that I just, I don't understand. For me, having my autism recognised it just gave me clarity and understanding as to why I felt that way for such a long, for, for as long as I can remember. Um, I constantly miss things that seem to come quite naturally to other people. Um, I find social situations exhausting. Um, school for me was a very difficult time. It was a very confusing time. Um, I really struggled at school. I never actually finished school. Um, and then I think just quite like um, things that like now I know that I'm autistic were quite obvious, but like needing a routine, um, finding it very, very difficult when that routine changes. Um, sensory differences. Um, I've always been sensitive to textures of food and I've always been very habitual and routine in what I eat. Um, so I've never eaten a humongous variety of food. In fact, I grew up on pasta. I had pasta for lunch and dinner. Um, I'd always take a pot of pasta into school with me. Um, plain pasta and cheese. Um, and um, not only food textures, but a sensitivity to noise. I've always found um, noise is probably one of the most difficult sensory differences that I struggle to accommodate for. Um, I am going to do a different video about ways I've learned to manage those differences because I have managed to find ways of coping with them. Um, but for now, I'm just going to stick to this video being how actually having my autism recognised has helped me. Um, because all of those things, they add up. And for me, they led, they added to this feeling that I was wrong. I was getting things wrong. I couldn't get anything right. Um, and, and that contributed to me becoming unwell. Um, I've, I've struggled with my mental health for a number of years. And I've struggled with an eating disorder for a number of years but within that there's been times where I've been doing better and times when I've been doing worse um, and I think a lot of these things that I've spoken about sort of the sensory difficulties the need for routine the social differences um, and struggling with those kind of things the the need for the repetitive behaviors and all that kind of stuff Almost all of that was put down to my anorexia for a long time. And and in my in the time that I've had my anorexia diagnosis, I have had points where I have been in remission from anorexia. I've had years within the time I've had the diagnosis when I have been living a normal life, eating what young Fee would have eaten. Granted, never a huge variety, but that's because that's related to my autism but I was a healthy way, I was living a life that was not constrained by my eating disorder, but I still struggled. I still had these difficulties. And most of all, I just felt abnormal. And I think when you felt abnormal your whole life, there is an ache and a frustration to just be normal. Um, 
And for me, that frustration led me to become angry with myself because I didn't understand why I felt the way I did. I didn't understand why I looked at everyone else and thought, I don't understand how you're just knowing what to do. And I, it made me angry with myself. It made me hate myself. And so when autism was mentioned, I didn't understand what autism meant when it was first brought up. I, I had a false stereotype in my head. Um, and when it was first mentioned, I was sort of like, I, d I don't know. And then I thought about it and then I read about it and then I spoke to people about it. And it felt like everything fell into place. Everything, the way I have felt my entire life, the good times, the bad times, the strengths, the difficulties, everything made sense. And that making sense, it enabled me to stop being so angry with myself. It helped me stop feeling like I needed to pretend to be someone that I wasn't because I understand, I understood why I am the way I am. And I felt a huge relief because I realized I wasn't wrong. I was different. Um, I wasn't neurotypical, but that's why I found that's why I find the neurotypical world difficult, because I'm neurodiverse, I'm autistic. And not just for me, my, having my autism recognised helped the people around me, you know, it helped my family understand why I was the way I was and why I struggled with what I struggled with, but also why I excelled in certain things. It helped my friends understand and and they're just wonderful. They're sort of, I take Hannah, for example, um, whenever we're planning to do something, she will send me an itinerary of what we're doing and when and where we're gonna go and what time we're gonna be doing. And that is a small adaptation that enables me to take part in the world and not feel overwhelmed by it. We learned that small adaptations to the way we did things with me and my family, with me and my friends, with me and my team. They made the biggest of differences. They enabled me to feel less overwhelmed and, and be able to join in. And I could go on and on and on about this. And I know I've had so, so many people ask me to talk about this more. And I am going to try to. Um, because it is important to me. But I wanted to start somewhere, so I started with this question. How having my autism recognised has helped me? Because, because someone messaged me the other day and they said, since your autism diagnosis, it's like something's changed in you. It's like you've just allowed yourself to be you. And they were right that there has been a change. Um, it doesn't, having my autism recognised didn't change, it didn't change anything, like nothing externally changed. Everyone in my life who, they already, they knew how I was, they knew what I found difficult and they knew what I did really well in. I think for me, when they said, yeah, you're autistic, for me, it was just right. I get it. I get it now. And it meant, it meant I just, I did allow myself to be. And I think looking back, there is so much of my mental health difficulties that were because of an my unrecognised autism and that makes me passionate to change things that that makes me want to 
talk about it because if someone else can hear my experience and my story and they go oh my gosh that sounds like me that's how I feel and then they go and find out that they're autistic and it helps them that means the world to me and even if that's only one other person that means the world to me because that changes things for that one other person like for me when I read that book about a girl who was autistic and it was just her experience of the world and I read it and I thought this I, I was in tears because I was like this is how I felt my entire life and it all makes sense now and I'm not wrong and it's not wrong and I'm okay so if you have any I, 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 I am going to specifically talk about adaptations to my eating disorder treatment because that is been a huge thing and really really important to me and that's my job so I am going to talk about that if anyone's got any other questions I definitely want to talk about the things that like the traits the autistic traits that I didn't realize were autism until I got my autism diagnosis and then we looked back and, and sort of said yeah that was that was autism um there's so many things that were now I understand their autism I'm like yeah um, so I also want to talk about that but if anyone's got any more like specific questions then pop them in the comments and I will try and address them but this is the first video that I wanted to make specifically about this and yeah I don't know why I've put it off for so long but I wanted to do it so we've done it I'm Fee Fiona, Fee, Fiona, however you want to call me. And I'm autistic and I've learned that is entirely okay. And I wanted to finish this video on this quote, which this one's from me.